Okay, so, um, I don't really have a plan here. We're just going to build something and see where it goes. So, um, let's go ahead and start a new document. And then don't forget to do units first. So we'll change the type to architectural, um, and we'll hit OK right there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I don't know how big I'm going to make this. Um, I don't know. Let's just go. Um, so we'll just do room sizes because that's kind of a good thing to measure. Um, we'll do a 12 foot by 12 foot room here. And so again, I just did 12 feet over, 12 feet up. I'm going to just snap that one there and close it right there. So now I've got this room right here. Um, let's say I wanted to have another room off of here. So what I can do is I can take this line. I can offset it. Um, I use four inches in this class for interior walls, six inch for exterior. So while I'm working, I'm just going to go ahead and offset that. Um, and then I'm just going to keep working. So I might offset this six feet as another reference line. Pull this across. And then we'll make, uh, we'll make a hallway right here. So I'll pull this up. I'm free. I'm completely just making this up on the spot. So we'll call this like a four foot wide hallway here. So I'll offset this line four feet. Um, and then maybe we have another room over here. So I'll offset this four inches. And then um, maybe we have another, I don't know, let's do another 12 foot by 12 foot room over here. So I'll offset this line 12 feet. And then I'll offset this one 12 feet as well. Um, and then, sorry, my allergies are, <laughs> okay. Um, so then we can extend this line to, oh wait, there we go. Um, and then we'll extend that one. This one I'll just have to drag over and it should snap, but probably not. And then, um, come on. I swear I can't, come on. All right, fine. We'll just grab it. So then um, I can work my way around here and just add rooms to this space. Um, let's say that I have another room up here that's a bathroom, so I'll set my offset to four inches. Um, I will offset this one by five feet for a bathroom. And then you're starting to see I'm kind of running out of some other lines over here, so I'll just manually draw on a line right here. And then I'll do another offset, eight feet, to make the width for that bathroom. And then I can offset this four inches again to create that wall. Um, so just to clean this up a little bit um, so that we, and eventually I do, <laughs> I do actually clean these up. Um, but, uh, and we'll do a fillet, nope, not fillet, fillet, not fill. Uh, radius zero is a nice way to select two lines and close that corner right there. All right, so I've got a bunch of lines here. Now what do I do with them? So um, because I have, like, say this is all exterior on this side. So what I can do is I can take these and I can start offsetting these six inches instead. So I'll get a couple lines that are offset like this. And then I can come in again with the fillet tool. My radius is still at zero inches. Uh, we'll hit M for multiple. And then I'll just go around and close up all these corners right here. So now you can see that I have, I don't know, we've got that right there too. It's not unusual to use trim as well if you just do a trim tool and cut through those spaces right there. So now I have kind of like this interior room here, interior room here, and then this is all exterior. Um, let's put in, um, let's see. Let me offset this two feet down. So we'll do both of these, select that. I'm gonna do space bar, space bar, um, and place that. And then this is where I can kind of get into like some mess right here in terms of how am I gonna add a corner in here. So basically I do these two lines as references. I'm gonna use this to offset four inches, place it, and then I can come through here with the, ooh, I missed this corner too. With the trim tool, we'll zap, that um, we can get rid of those and those 
those, that, and then the rest of these. I should be able to just, oh, not that one, select directly and delete, but apparently not. So I'll just keep the trim selection going. Um, thankfully, a lot of these commands are easy to type with your left hand while moving the mouse. So that's how I'm able to work kind of quickly on some of these. Um, so if I want to put a door in the middle here, I may not have made this wide enough, but we'll find out. So let's say it's a two foot four door. I'm going to offset this um, one foot two um, to either side. So I'll just place it and place it and I'm good to go there. Um, bathroom. Um, one thing that I have you guys do is anytime you guys have a door, you would never draw a door flush against a wall, right? Um, let me make a door. So I, actually, I'll show you how I make a door. Um, so interior door, one inch thick. Um, and we're doing this at a, a two foot four door. So I'm going to do two foot four. I'm going to come over. I'll have to reference this and close it. So then we had talked the other day about um, actually placing. Um, and I'm going to rotate this first. Actually, I should have drawn it that way. Um, so, what are my three tangents deep right now? Right, arcs. So, um, I'm going to draw a line up from this, this corner right here. So, the one that's actually on the bottom right here, I'm going to draw this up two foot four. I'm going to go to the arc tool, and again, we're going to choose start center end. So, start far corner right here, and then right there and actually what I'm gonna do if it's gonna let me is I don't think it yeah I'll just overdraw it it's fine um, you end up with this tiny little thing that my OCD can't handle but it's I don't care if you guys do it um, and then we can get rid of that line there and so what we end up with is this two foot four door with a swing um, now back to the previous tangent um, when you guys have doors and let's be good and create a block here. Um, we'll call this two foot four. Uh, actually, we'll do a door int two foot four. Okay, that's fine for now. Pick point. Um, and again, think about where you're going to register this door. So I'm going to go on this corner because this part of the door should always be attached to a wall or a reference point that we can use. We have the object selected. We are good to go. So I'm going to hit OK. What? Oh. What? Bleh. Right. Wait. Oh, is it the inches? Yeah. <sighs> Two foot. Can I do underscores? I didn't check to see if I can do underscores. Door in 2, 4. Cool. All right. So now I have that as a block here that I can reference. We can go ahead and delete it. So then what I was saying before, like seven tangents ago, is you don't put a door right here, right? Go look at a door, any door in your house. And you don't actually have, like, it's not flat up against a wall when you open it, right? It's a couple inches off. You've got framing here, like the door opening, let's say it's right here. You've got framing right here. You've got a door handle right here. Usually it can actually swing a little bit wider. Typically, my point of reference for this is you need at least four inches. Um, but I typically use the wall width. So if I have a four inch interior wall right here, then I'm going to put this four inches away from that corner. And then when I place this, I will place it right there on that corner. Now, um, I could offset this line right here to be two foot four, go up there, or I, because I've already placed the door, I could have used this as a reference point with a line, drawn that in. Okay, so we'll do another trim. And we'll get rid of that little space right there. Um, we need to do the door here. Um, how you do this is kind of up to you. Um, you can frame it based on the interior, or you can do the exterior. But because this is, I would center this on the interior side, I would use this as a reference. Come across. Um, every house should have a three foot wide door. It's how you get a fridge and um, a stove and oven and all that stuff in. Every house, I think. I don't know if it's code, but it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, you should really do this. Um, so you should have a three foot wide door. Front door is usually the one to go. So I'm going to offset this one foot six 
to either side. Oh, what was that message? Oh, that was autosave. <laughs> scared me. Okay, offset one foot six. Offset there, click again, offset there. Come back with the trim tool and just zap all of those. And then again, um, if I hadn't, well, yeah, we can build another exterior door. Exterior door should open interior every time, three foot. Nope, that was three inches, three foot. Um, and then we're going to do a solid door. Um, I think it's two inches, but... Mm, and then we'll just close that. And then again, arc tool, uh, start, center, end. So start, center, and then because this one's going that opposite direction, I'll hold down control, which will reverse it. And then we have, again, the little spot that my OCD cannot handle. Um, and then once I've done this, I can save this as a block. Um, and this is X door uh, three foot zero. We will specify our on screen point and um, that's all good. Okay. So, um, oh, right. I missed this one too. Trim. E zap that. And then um, that's using the two foot four. Um, see how that doesn't line up. So this would be a great time for us to use a rotate. Um, start there and then it should snap to the direction we want. So that's a really quick way. Um, I wasn't timing this and I was rambling and going off on tangents, um, but that was a fairly quick way to set up um, just a small portion of a house here. All right. Um, the other thing that we would do is we would actually, well, let's create holes for windows, right? So again, typically centered on a wall. Um, every bedroom in California, at least I think, needs to have a four foot wide window. Um, but well, we can do that here. So I'll offset this, oops, not 200, offset uh, two foot, either direction. And then we'll probably put another one over here, but we'll leave it as is for now. So we'll do trim. Um, and windows are something that are kind of a long discussion. I know there's a lot of people who like to just kind of leave those lines there. Um, there's a bunch of people who want to remove them. Um, as long as I can identify that that is a window, um, I'm fine with that. You're going to run into different styles of people doing construction documents. It's just going to happen. So um, I will pretend for now that that's just kind of what's going on right there. And um, for the purposes of documentation, I'm just going to block this off for right now, too and this and these okay so um some people like to do like a little one or two inch offset um for their windows so they would offset in two inches um, and then you would draw these little one inch offset lines to indicate um, different types of windows. So for the example, that might be a fixed pane window, um, or sorry, a, the, the kind where you can lift up the bottom half of it, um, that kind. Um, other types are the kinds where you might have it slide from side to side. So in that case, you would need to indicate with these lines often by, um, usually the overlap is about half an inch. So I'm just going to move one of these one way. Um, 0 0.5, uh, 0.5, okay. So then um, these would have to overlap, so I would come back in with the trim tool, zap that, zap that, and this is a window with a slider that you can open in a direction. And then from here, you would take this, and again, this is where you would create a block out of it using one of these points as a reference. Uh, another way, the way that I typically learn to draw these um, windows is to actually, and it, it might be a mix even, um, but start at a corner, do a one inch, one inch, and then these were what, four foot, so I'm going to need four foot two, bring it in to right there, 
And then for the sake of speed, we will mirror this, not me, mirror. So we'll do use a mirror, I'll use the center axis right here. Do that, don't erase source. And then again, we would create the panes that go through the window. So you have, I did that, there we go, okay. So you'd have a one inch offset. Um, the, oh right, um, we need to actually move this out another inch. Um, part of why I like it this way is it just verifies that you have window moldings and such. Um, but realistically, you're never gonna, you should have um, window labels and a sheet that identifies what the windows are. Um, so the actual like, nitpickiness of me going through and going, oh, I'm going to draw this so I have a slightly larger exterior side of the window is not only sometimes inaccurate, it's also um, not really necessary. But this is just how I kind of learn to draw windows. Um, and it works really well if if this is the case where you're working like this. This is the kind that works really well when you delete those. I think that looks like a better window than that, but everyone else seems to disagree with me so I'm fine with that any way you want to draw windows go to Google find something that looks good um, if I see you guys don't doing some kind of like super wacky looking doors or windows I'll talk to you but generally um, as long as I can identify that it's a window I'm fine with it um, so two different ways to draw windows you probably find more um, someone might have a different way to draw doors um, I don't I've never seen it, but um, so yeah, that's kind of the process to go through there. Um, next, uh, let's create some layers. So we're gonna do, just real quick, we'll do doors. We will do windows. And then let's throw in some room labels. Like I said, I'm gonna try and push you guys a little bit further this year. Um, let's also do flooring actually. Um, and one of the things that, uh, I'll get it, I'll get kind of deeper into the weeds on this, um, in a later video, um, is actually indicating things that are upper and lower. Um, some people use UPPR, others use UPR, um, just like there's lower, uh, so, um, LWR, I think LW is used for something else, so maybe L UPR is better, um, whatever, but I'm going to indicate that this is lower floor. Um, and we will get to what that means in a minute. Um, okay, so once I've done that, again, I've already built all these here in um, layer zero, but now that I have these new layers, I'm gonna select my doors. I'm gonna move into the doors layer. Um, with this particular window, I'm gonna select that interior space. Um, and again, um, I'm gonna group it now, but again, you could make it a block if you wanted to. Um, with this setup, I can again make this a group and I would probably use one of these interior sides. Um, so now I have two windows that I can reference as well. We'll move these off to the windows layer. Um, actually, let's apply some colors here. So we got doors, make them red. Again, I don't care what colors you guys use. Um, that's something that is entirely up to you. As long as you, and if you're working with a partner, your partner understands, um, what the things are that you're looking at, I don't care. Um, because everywhere you go is going to have different styles. So then, um, what was I going to do? Oh, I was going to, um, we're going to turn on our line weights. Display line weight. Uh, LW display on. And then all of these right now have by layer, and layer is at default. So let's set them to. Oh, let's just do 0.2 across the board and see how that looks. That's probably too thin, actually, now that I think about it. Definitely too thin. Eh, 
Eh, no, that works. Okay, so, um, yeah, just really quickly, just putting all those things down. Um, let's again go in here, and we will put in some text, um, which I have to recreate again because I don't, it doesn't save. Um, so we will put this, uh, we'll create a new annotative. Um, we'll call this room labels. Um, we will set this to city blueprint. Paper text height, quarter inch. Didn't screw that one up this time. Okay, apply, close, and then again we'll do single line text. J for justify, C for center. Um, I'll find approximately the center of the room here. Angle out that way. Um, full caps, we'll call this home office one. And then we will set our scale, quarter inch. Select that, add current scale. Set this back to one to one. Um, and then we can go to our sheet right here. Quarter inch. And there's our home office. We'll turn off the grid here. Um, we'll create another layer for the viewports. Uh, uh, viewports. Actually, we'll just call these sheet hidden. Uh -huh. Color fuchsia sort. Okay. Um, we will assign this to here. And then we will hide that whole layer. And very quickly, we have kind of this really nice little floor plan. Um, one thing we are actually still missing is hatch. So we'll do hatch. We'll do solid up here. Pick a point and then click inside of there. Um, this is something, actually I should mention this, this is something that we get into discussions about all the time is how should you do this? Should you do one hatch per little section? So I can do that, right? And then I can bring up the tool again, pick points, do that section. Or do you run hatch, solid pick points and do all of these all at once. Um, because what you're doing when you do this is you're creating, excuse me, a, um, an object. So if I click on this, you can see I've got them all selected right there. If I move this hatch out, that's all the same hatch, right? So if you have a whole bunch of different sections of your floor plan, do you want to do little chunks or do you want to do a whole bunch all at once? But if you modify your floor plan in any way, you would have to go in and edit this um, and remove sections and place new ones or just delete it and start over. Um, I'm a big fan of doing a couple small sections kind of logically based on what's going on. I'm going to leave that up to you. Not even going to get into that. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so we'll go back to layout. There's our home office. We have walls, doors, windows. Um, let's actually throw in a floor. So we'll go back to, oh, we actually need to, so for this, putting in floors, we'll hide our doors. I'm going to put a temporary line right, nope, not right there, through the center of, oops, I'm on the wrong one. How do I get there? Make sure this is back on zero too. Um, and if I wanted, I could probably actually make these on the hidden layer, but we're not going to bother. Okay. And then we'll throw one more line across the top here. So now that I have these areas all walled off, I can go to hatch. And then we would choose something that's appropriate for it. So you've got a little scroll thing here. Um, click on that little nub there and it expands. So let's say we've got uh, this tile right here. And if you're gonna go place it, you might need to adjust um, the scale here. So if that's not big or small enough. I'm going to set this to 1.5. You can see the tiles are a little bit bigger. We'll do two. Great. Um, let's go uh, hit escape out of that. I'll do another hatch. Um, we don't want to do concrete. We'll do herringbone. Um, click on it. There we go. And that's too big. So we'll do this at 0.6.
Uh, and then we'll continue the herringbone into the bathroom, I suppose, because that's normal. Um, all right, so close hatch creation. So now when we go to our floor plan here, you can see that that's like very different, right? This is kind of super blocky and it overrides um, visually a lot of stuff. So typically the finishes, things like flooring, you don't do until a later sheet in your document. Um, but I want you guys to know how to handle it in case you do need to. And one thing that I would say, it, um, well, first let's move them. So we'll select the, no, get out of that tool. Okay, got them. Um, we'll move them to the floor layer right here. And then um, we will set the thickness right here to, um, let's do 0.9. And then sometimes it's also, um, no, we'll leave it at that and we'll just see how that looks. So then see how the lines are a little bit thinner? Maybe we could go thinner. So if I click on this, um, layer properties, floor. Oh, was it not taking that? 0.9. Oh, what did I do there? Oh. I know what I am. I did. <laughs> I got myself stuck in paper space. Happens to all of us. So P space again to get out of paper space if you get stuck in it like I just did. Um, set that back to quarter inch. <laughs> Super confused there. Um, so you want these floor lines to be super thin so that when you go to print them, uh, we'll do print. Um, they should basically be like a Oh, what's the drink everyone makes jokes about? The uh, It's like it, putting an orange next to your drink and smelling it or whatever. I don't know. Um, but these should be very light, thin lines. You don't want them to overpower it. Um, so the lighter and kind of thinner that you can make them, that's the hierarchy that you want to introduce there. Um, that kind of should have been covered in your hand drafting classes, um, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, this is the process that you would go through to do that. Um, something else cool that I um, kind of ran across the other day that I'd never thought to do is you can also explode these. So if you want to get real weird, you can have a whole bunch of lines in here. Um, if I place a rectangle, oh, that snapped. I didn't want it to snap there. Um, now that I've created a rectangle like that, I can use the trim tool to actually destroy um, all the lines in here and clear out a space. So this is something that, again, I didn't know you could do that. I, don't, I, I had never thought of it before, but I just found it out the other day. So um, I typically just avoided doing stuff like that, but if you want to cut a hole in it, there you go. You can just explode um, these. Now, what I am left with is a whole bunch of these lines just kind of floating around here. Um, an easy way to select those is to just turn off everything else. So we'll turn off zero layer, we'll turn off the windows, we'll turn off the room labels, and we're just left with that floor layer. And now I should be able to go in here, um, oh, actually do a selection across like that, and it doesn't grab those, and then I can group this. Now, if I need to make any changes to this floor, I'm kind of screwed, um, but it is what it is. So we'll turn everything back on, well, except for the ones we don't want on. Um, so I'm going to give you guys like a little sheet in class. Um, if it's not up, it should be up in the thing. By the time you guys get there um, or get to this point in the video, it should be up. Um, but just kind of a demo project house to kind of work through your skills and make sure you're up, you're good to go for uh, next week on. So I will see you guys in class.